Good evening, church. Good evening, my family. Good evening, all here tonight and all online. Thank you for being here. Thank you for the presence of God in our lives and in this church family. I'm so grateful to be a part of it. Tonight, we'll be concentrating on James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. One lawgiver and judge. One lawgiver and judge. Those are two pretty powerful verses, 11 and 12. I'll have many other verses that I'll speak on. I won't ask you to turn to them because there'll be a lot. But nonetheless, there will be. So thank you. Bear with me. But the goal this evening is to explore James's desire for us not to speak evil against one another and not to judge one another. So much easier said than done. So much easier. Actually, there should be lots of self-examination when studying these two verses. For sometimes when we speak, we speak ill and sometimes don't even know it. So, James chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Do not speak evil against one another, brothers. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. There's only one lawgiver and judge, he who was able to save and destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? This time I'll read supporting verses from various books. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, putting aside all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measured, it will be measured to you. Strong words, words to consider, words to think about. Your standard of measured will be measured to you. Sometimes we're pretty harsh in judgment of one another. We have to always consider our words. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 22 states, For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. He will save us. James, chapter 5, verse 9. Do not complain, brethren, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. And Matthew, chapter 10, verse 28. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So James is talking to us. He's talking to us, the church. In chapter 4, he is talking to the church. He's talking to fellow servants of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, the church, must take special care not to slander or judge unfairly our fellow Christians or anyone else for that matter. We are flesh, so we'll fall. But if God can and does forgive, who are we not to? There are going to be times when some feelings here in the church, here in the church family, will be hurt out of loving discipline. Loving discipline. But if we pursue the truth of God's word without reservation, we being flesh will openly admit that love sometimes hurts. Isn't that a song? I won't sing it. 
Okay, love hurts. <laughs> Sometimes I'll just open the book of Proverbs, you know, Proverbs. And it just slaps me upside the head a few times. And I'm like, oh, oh, I feel it. You know, and I do it purposely to stay grounded. Because, oh my, we can grow high and mighty from a single compliment. Or we can get down and dirty from a single insult. So, when I go through Proverbs, it brings me back down to earth. So much of the Bible does. But I speak on Proverbs a lot. It keeps me grounded. Let's just take the time to recognize that loving discipline is for our well-being. I, I can remember when my dad would have a belt in hand and a stern look in his eye saying, this hurts me more than it's going to hurt you, son. I'm like, huh? <laughs> you know, like, can't we just discuss what I did? <laughs> um, I'd ask my dad, and it's kind of funny because sometimes I talk my way out of it. So I asked him, why do you have to be judge, jury, and executioner? I feel that. How do you say it hurts more? Discipline can be painful. Sometimes he wouldn't catch me until I got tired because I ran around a lot. You know, I avoided the physical discipline. But God told us not to spare the rod. The rod. Daddy took it seriously. I won't spare it. Come here, son. So <laughs> discipline is very important. It's necessary but it's how we receive it. Let's receive it positively. Let's receive it in love, especially if it's given in love. Since we know that we are the church and we're going to see some challenges, some um, who will judge based on gossip and rumors. Within the church and within families, there are those who judge and condemn out of anger and jealousy. Folks, we're in a spiritual battle. We need to stick together as family, as the family that we are. We'll have disagreements like family, like normal family, because we're family. But even that can be out of love. If we're being truthful and honest with ourselves, we're probably thinking of a judgment that we placed on someone undeservedly. We can think of times when we've said or acted harshly. I called this person that, or I called this person this, or I said this bad thing about a person. Sometimes we allow our company to influence our words and thinking. We allow ourselves to be manipulated and convinced to say things that we shouldn't. We don't actually know the person. We just heard bad things about them and we ran with it. We turn on the news or just any television show and we're manipulated and molded by people in place to do the evil one's bidding. We, church, were chosen by God to receive the word and then give it to those who haven't heard it, to those who have allowed the world to remove them from it, and even those who deny the word. We need to be the ones who set the example of God's good grace, his mercies, his loving discipline, and his love. How can we, the church, draw anyone to God if they visit us and feel that we aren't on one accord? We have to be of one accord. Ephesians chapter 2 Verses 1 and 2 is for us. That's for us. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. I'm going to repeat that, a portion of that. According to the prince of the power of the air. Family. That means the airwaves. We have to be careful what we're hearing. We have to be careful of how we're hearing it, how we're receiving, what is blatantly put out there to distract us from God's will, to pull us away. We are of this world. No, 
we're in this world. We're in this world, but we're certainly not of it. I know we have to watch the news to understand what's happening in the world. But let's not remember, let's, let's always remember to open God's word, to recall God's word, the Bible, so we can see what's happening in the world and then we open God's word or call to remembrance God's word about what he told us about this world. But then let's remember God's always in control. So let's read and or listen to what God says about current and future events. He talks about them for sure. It's in his word. We know, in a sense, what's coming. Maybe not always when, but we know what God said. So God told us these things we see in our witnessing would take place in the last days, such as lawlessness. Lawlessness. There's always been lawlessness. But in my opinion, increased lawlessness was witnessed when actual police stations were recently attacked and burned. And it was allowed to happen. It was allowed to happen. That's increased lawlessness when you attack basically the law. Those that, for the most part, protect us and serve us. I have to talk about that for a minute. It's important to point out. In every situation, every job, there's going to be a bad apple or even two. But it doesn't ruin the whole bunch. An officer did a bad thing. It was unjust. He did wrong. But two wrongs don't equal a right either. It's okay to protest. But what happened with rioting and stealing, looting, burning, destroying, hurting people, that's all from the evil one. The airwaves that the evil one controls helped control the minds of those who allowed it to happen. And they went out and they did bad things. And they went out and they hurt people. In my opinion, again, my opinion, it wasn't about the man who was unjustly murdered. It was about selfishness. It was about greed. It was about destruction. All things that don't represent the church, for sure. So, it was sad what happened to him, but it happens to lots of people, and I don't justify it. But I will say this, all lives matter. God created us all, no matter the complexion. He wants all our souls to be with him. He gave us the choice, though, to choose him. So let's choose God. Because all lives matter. He wants all of us to be with him. The evil one is jealous of us. Those who serve him, the evil one, and worship him, Do they think he cares for them? No, he doesn't like them. He doesn't like us. He's jealous of us. He wants to bring as many of us as he can with him when his time comes. Hopefully, they get the message before it's too late. Lawlessness is continuing and it's being pushed. Even the thought of defunding police stations is evidence 
of the desire of increased lawlessness. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 says, Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. Family, when love grows cold, evil heats up. It's up to us to impress the law of God to all who are willing to have an ear to hear. These next verses may offend some, but the word of God is the truth. It's the light. The word of God is life. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, realizing the fact that law is not made for the righteous person, but for those who are lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers and immoral men and homosexuals and kidnappers and liars and perjurers and whatever else is contrary to sound teaching according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God with which I've been entrusted, with which we've been entrusted. So just as James states in verse 12, there's only one lawgiver and judge. The one who was able to save and destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? We tend not to think about the fact that many who report the news over the airways, uh, they're flesh and blood as well. With fleshly sinful tendencies. We often lend an ear to man and then talk about what someone else did as if we came to those conclusions on our own. It's easy to talk badly about someone and therefore judge them. The tongue, folks, the tongue, if we could just control the tongue, so much easier said than done. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 states, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. I'm going to back up a bit and go back to James chapter 3, verses 6 through 10. I want to read those because that relates to the tongue. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of inequity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. For every species of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed by the human race, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come both blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. So with that, I'll read Psalms chapter 141, verse 3. Set guard, O Lord. Set guard, O Adonai, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Yes, Lord, help us to remember that what spews out of the mouth comes from the heart. Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, fornications, thefts, false witness, slanders. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 2 states, Every man's way is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. We, church, have to set the example of boldness and truth and love in Christ. That's true, isn't it? Our ways are pretty much right in our own eyes. We tend to do something that we think is good and right. And then realize, oops, I just read in God's word that it isn't. What have I done? 
I got to learn. I got to stay in the word. But I, got, I can't keep it to myself. That's all of our mission. I can't keep it to myself. I got to give it. Got to give it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. Just remember that we, we have to honor that for sure. We have to put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. The one who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks evil against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge. There are quite a few verses in the Bible that, that can be and are often misinterpreted or misunderstood. Jesus' words, do not judge so that you will not be judged, is one of those verses. People tend to take judge and apply it. Well, we as sinful flesh tend to take that word and apply it to whatever situation that best fits our needs. All too often, the verse is disobeyed time and time again, even by us Christians, even by me. We're not exempt. We have to be prayerful and careful not to be so easily snared. Easier said than done again. We have to keep in mind that it is a sin to judge another person in evil, sinful ways, even in your heart. Judgmental words flow from a judgmental heart. I saw a commercial where someone stated, don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me. Sounds innocent enough though, right? Don't judge me. But what was she really saying? Was she saying, please don't judge me. I'm trying to do the best I can with what I have. Or was she saying, I'll do what I want to do when I want to do it, and you can't tell me how to live my life? Based on the rest of that commercial, that's kind of what she was saying. God gave us the ability to use discernment in judgment. God did, did give man the right to judge, as in the court of law. But it should be based on God's instructions, not tainted with man's ideas. Psalms chapter 19, 119, verse 137. In Hebrew it says, Zadik ata Adonai veyashal mish patecha. Righteous are you, Adonai, Lord. Righteous are you, Lord, and your judgments are upright. <sighs> Nowadays, we seem to be losing the right, even the right to speak against something that goes against God's word. God did talk about in the last days what was considered right will be considered wrong and vice versa. We can't even talk about marriage. Even though God described in detail what marriage is all about, the problem is at times we tend to judge in anger or disgust or with the attitude of I'm right and you're wrong. And you may be right, probably are based on God's word but wrong in attitude of judgment, in envy, bitterness, or self-ambition. That's the kind of judging we aren't supposed to do. That's the type of judging that James condemns. That's the kind of judging that isn't to be found among true Christians. Don't forget, we all fall short of the glory of God. So in judgment, let's use sound judgment. So instead of standing in judgment of the law, let's love the law. Speaking of judgment, I'm standing here and I'm giving God's word. So we who teach the word of God must always keep in mind that we are under stricter judgment by God. And, you know, I, I, I read that before my very first sermon, and I'm like, oh, 
I'm like, oh, do I do this? I mean, what do I do? What do I do? You know? Because you take that to heart. Strict your judgment. So we have to seek what is right based on God's word at all times. We have to seek what is pure, considerate, peaceful, merciful, sincere, and loving. We should at all times seek to imitate Jesus, to be servant leaders. Let's remember what James impresses upon us in verse 4, that friendship with the world is hostility towards God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That's tough. If we really consider it, if we really think about it, as we go about our daily lives, to work or wherever we're going, how easy it is to be snared by the ways of the world. Don't conform to it. Because then we become an enemy of God. As stated earlier, God is the lawgiver and judge. Listen to what God has to say on this matter. God says we are to preserve the good name of, our, of fellow believers. God says we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. <laughs> I'll repeat that. God says we are to love our neighbors as ourselves. I'm laughing because, <laughs> well, neighbors. But they're family. We're all God's children. We're all family. God says we are to not give false testimony against our neighbors. God says we are to love the truth and speak the truth in love. When we judge people the way James talks about, we're breaking God's perfect life-sustaining law. We're putting ourselves in God's place. Judging is an act that only the all-seeing, all-knowing God can perform perfectly. God is the only one who can judge perfectly because he has given us the ability to judge with righteousness based on his rule of law. So as we consider one lawgiver and one judge, let's remember, please, that God is always in control God is always in control. No matter what it may seem like, no matter what pressures we face to conform to the world, God is always in control. And in closing, I'm going to just say a couple of prayers, a couple of, of verses actually um, in Hebrew and then translate. Psalms chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. Ve ata Adonai, megin ba adi ke wodi umirim roshi. Koli el Adonai, ekra ve ya aneni, me har katso sila. Anisha hafti, vi ish ena hekti soki, ki Adonai yishmiheni. But you, Adonai, but you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cry out to Adonai, I cry out to the Lord with my voice, and he answers me from his holy mountain. Selah. I lie down and sleep. I awake, for Adonai, the Lord, sustains me. So let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Father, Abba, we thank you for this, this opportunity to give your word, receive your word, and then act on your word. Help us, Father, to stay alert, to stay cognizant of your word, to honor your law. You gave man law based on your law, and we are to respect that. But when lawlessness increases, Father, we rely on your law, because your law is the only true law. Help us also, Father, to not be judgmental, to not judge others. 
It's so easily done. Help us, Father, to guard our tones, to guard our minds, our hearts, to speak in love, to speak truth in love. We know that sometimes truth hurts, but ultimately it helps. So, Father, lift us up that we can lift others up, Father. We thank you for this opportunity again. We thank you for the mission that you set before each and every one of us to speak of your glory, your goodness, your love, your shalom, your peace, your rest, your goodness to us. A prayer of blessing. Yahweh Rechecha Adonai Veishmerecha Yaer Adonai Banav Elecha Vekuneka Yisa Adonai Vet Panav Elecha Veyasim Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. Thank you for your peace, for your shalom, Father. In the name of your Son, our Savior, Christ Yeshua, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen.